Oh, um, do you want a Jim Yarabun? Hello, everyone. That's good morning, everyone, in Korean. As you can see, I was looking at my Korean flashcards there for a little bit. Anyway, welcome back to the stream. Welcome to another video. What are we doing today? Well, we are continuing the build, continuing on the Master Grade Freedom Gundam by Bandai. This, I believe, is part three. I think it's part three. I never pay attention, you know, after, you know, after a week of doing stuff, I can never remember what part I'm on, but I think I'm on part three, okay? Here we go. This is what we've got done so far. Um, so last time we finished up this arm and it was very loose. Um, this one, of course, was nice and tight in its movements there, going out like that. This one was not, it was just flopping. So what I did is I kind of took it apart and I went in there and I put a little bit of paint on the, on the nubs and now it's nice and tight, just like its brother on the right side. So that solved that problem. But today we're going to finish, finish him by assembling his left leg. All right. All right. So you might see on the camera a little bit over here. I went ahead and because I knew that I was going to be using all except one part on the C tree, um, I took them all off. Um, did that about 20 minutes ago and I cleaned up all the nubs so they are all ready to go. I also did that with the only three blue pieces that are used on his leg. So it's going to be fairly simple to figure out what parts those are just by the diagrams. And when it calls for a part from the C tree, I can just look at my little pile here and match it up. Pretty simple, right? Well, in theory, anyway. So let's get into this. We need the C, the E1, E2, F1, F2, G, and J trees. So all the other ones can just stay in the box and leave me alone, right? Leave me alone for now. Don't have to worry about them, okay? Yes, all right. So, starting with the J, which I need to get here. Now we have two, two J trees. Now because I've built one leg already, most of these are already gone off of this one. So for the most part, I'm gonna be utilizing this one because they will be gone from that one. All right. So one thing to point out when you're doing these, um, you'll see this little spot here, it says um, times two. So we've got to do this twice. Now, because I was only doing one leg at a time, um, I only did it once. So, um, which just reminded me, I need to swap my glasses. So I've got about an hour or so here to go. And uh, that should be plenty of time to assemble the leg and then be done for the day. Uh, let's see, so we need 47, 48, and 49. 46, 15, these guys here, okay. So again, a lot of these dark gray parts wind up becoming part of the inner frame and 90% of it you don't really see. And so nub marks are not super high priority on getting rid of them. So it's just a matter of cleaning them up so they're smooth. And then you don't have to worry about them beyond that, usually. Um, in my experience so far, which admittedly is not a lot, um, I've only built three other Gundams in my life. Um, but in the three that I've built so far, that's something that's common that I've noticed is that uh, on the dark gray parts, you don't really need to worry about cleaning up the nub marks perfectly and well that's really nice because I don't know I think some people really love that process 
others not so much. Also from the J tree, we need 39 and 51, and then 34 and 40. But we'll do 39 and 51 first. 7, 38, 39. Thirty-nine, and then 51 is a little square block. Again, Saturday morning, rain is going in such a direction that the lanes are taking off, and you can hear everyone distinctly as it takes off. Thank you very much. So much quieter living near the airport when the wind is not in that direction. Okay, so this one goes on this side here, okay, like that. Now, we want to just kind of line it up so it's flush here, okay? Remember this issue from the, la from the other leg, and then it just goes in like this. Just like so. Okay. Now one thing that you do want to have, you want to make sure your nub mark is nice and flush there so that this will press in all the way, right? That is an important part of this, okay? So now we go to J40 and 34. So 40 is basically the other half, okay? Oh, what we got? Oh, hey, how are you? What model do you build? I like your room. That's like your secret garden. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so the build I am doing today, I'm going to show you the back of the instruction manual. This is the Freedom Gundam uh, Master Grade by Bandai. That guy there. That's what he's going to look like when he's all done. Just like that, that guy there. Once he's done, that's what it'll look like. So right now I am assembling one of the legs. Because I've already done this much on him. So he needs another leg still. And that's what we're doing today. Okay, so this now goes like this. This guy here goes with a certain direction with that facing up and goes in there. I build Strike Freedom. I started two years ago and I have two model kits. Oh, nice. I was thinking of doing the Strike Freedom, but you know, I had, when I first started thinking about building Gundams, I watched a video that was like the top five Gundam, master grade Gundams that you need to build kind of thing. And he had mentioned the basic, just the freedom, but not the strike freedom. So the freedom is what I bought and that sat on my shelf for a few months waiting for me to build it. And uh, well, I'm finally building it. <laughs> That's okay. Hey, no problem. I can understand you. All right. So next we need J38. Forty-one, thirty-seven, thirty-eight. There we are. Just thirty-eight, and I need G3. 
Now G, I believe, is one of the blue parts. So this is part of his foot. Okay. And that's going to be this guy here. And so these two go together. First we put this in this one. Right here. It's going to go like this. Just like so. Okay. And then it's going to go onto the back of this. And I believe this will be his heel. Just like so. Okay. Just like that. All right. Then we take G4, which is this guy, and we need J37. This guy here. Bottom of his foot. And so these go together. They go together over top of this, so this goes down in there like that, and then we sandwich it together with these. And there we have this token. Okay? And we take J46, this little skinny guy here. start the model kits. When do I start them? Um, do you mean like how long ago? Um, I've been building plastic model kits for years and years. Not on a professional level. I took probably 15-20 years off. I didn't build anything. And then I got back into it about a year and a half ago. Something like that. Started building them. Um, but my first Gundam I built maybe six months ago, something like that. So my first Gundam kit. Okay, we need C1, but that's off of the C tree, which is this one, which I've already taken all the parts off of. And so that's going to be this guy, and he's going to go down on the top of that G46 that I just put on there. And now we've got some color to his foot. And now we want G8, and that will be this guy. Oh, I didn't quite clean up that one. There we go. And that's going to slide down in just like this into that little spot. I actually need to clean this up. What's your favorite model kits and the gun plug do you hate? Do you have? Um, I would say, well, I've only built three Gundams up until this point. Um, you can check out my videos on my YouTube channel if you want. <laughs> um, the uh, I built the RX seventy eight dash two. Um, version 3.0. I built that one. That was my first one I did um, at the recommendation of a friend. Build the very first OG Gundam, so I did that. And then what was my second one? My second one was the the uh, Gunner Zaku Lunamaria Hawk version uh, custom. That one was a pretty cool one. I like that one. And then I built the uh, the unicorn. The unicorn, I would say, is probably although it, the unicorn looks really cool, um, I'm not a big fan of it. It um, my it's very flimsy, and I don't like that because it does have the gimmick where it all opens up all the pieces and shows the cycle frame inside, right? Um, and it's just the pieces are really flimsy and they can fall apart. Please subscribe to my Instagram. Thank you. That's awesome. 
Unfortunately, I don't post very often on my Instagram um, because I only upload pictures of the builds that I've done, right? And uh, so it's usually like maybe once a month I'm actually posting something on there because it usually takes me about um, three or four weeks to actually go through a build and get it complete and everything before I'm actually taking pictures. Um, so unfortunately, I don't post to my Instagram very often. Um, YouTube, of course, is about once a week or so, or twice a week, Saturdays and Sundays kind of thing. Um, but, yeah, unfortunately, not a huge amount of activity. Uh, flimsy you, uh, some success. <laughs> These are annoying and the, the mode, mode changes the thing, but all are very solid builds. Well, admittedly so, but I'm going to show you. I'll grab it here. Um, I find pieces, he doesn't like to hold his gun very well, his gun's kind of flimsy in there. The pieces here on his, uh, going when you move them, they, you try and pose him in any kind of a thing, and these want to come, these pop off easy. Um, they're just, they're, they're flimsy. I'm, I'm scared to move him. Um, because of how delicate the, the pieces are and it's like it's tight and they don't want to move and then you wind up moving things that you don't want to move and so that's why I just don't like how flimsy everything is so yeah Thanks. That's awesome. Okay, so back to our foot. We've got to put this piece on and the two little side pieces. Okay. So this guy goes down in like this. Should snap in. There we go. Just like that. Okay. And then these guys go on the sides. Which one for the unicorn or for the uh, the freedom? The unicorn is actually it's the one that comes with the MS cage. It came with the uh, with the cage. Yeah, it came with the cage. So it's that one. Okay, so next is J, 42, 52, and 53. Same here as the 2010 MG. Yeah, I only got into it um, maybe about a year ago. I um, was thinking about building a Gundam, seeing how popular they were, and I was like, okay, you know what? I, was, I love Transformers, so Gundams are like giant robots too, so let's get into it. HD color version. Okay. Hmm. Um, so I looked into it, downloaded um, the original Gundam series, and watched it, and was like, yeah, okay, I, I understand why people like this. Um, and so I kind of got into it, and I have to say, yeah, I'm kind of a fan. I do think they're pretty cool. Um, So, yeah, and of course these Bandai kits, you really can't complain too much. They are, they're pretty good. You like the 2010 better than the Verka? Oh yeah. Yeah, I was looking at the Verka version, but I thought, you know what? I kind of like the idea of it coming with its cage and everything. So I got that one. I've heard that the Verka one had some issues with it. I don't remember what the issues were. Um, I think 
overcomplicated or something like that, over engineered or something like that. Very tight tolerances. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I can see that being a little bit of an issue, if, especially if you want to do anything custom to it. And it's got the lightings. The Verka has a lighting to, in it too, doesn't it? I don't remember exactly. box so oh yeah it's an add-on thing right um, an add-on kit to add the lighting there we go so there's this piece which we're not going to use for a few, little bit here because well that's the way it is we need j35 36 and 43 so 43 is just this little square block only the MGX has the LED. Ah, okay. I've watched some reviews on the uh, Unicorn series, and uh, I see some people they some people love it, and others absolutely hate it. Um. Too much space magic, right? I thought it was an okay series. It was a little bit, you know, this whole thing about the um, Plossus. What, what do they call it? The Plossus box? Something like that. Um, and I was just going to ruin everybody if we open it up and find out what's, what's in it. And it's just going to destroy everything. And, Blah blah blah. I don't want to give away too many spoilers if you haven't watched it. But I don't know. Not a, well, you never actually watched them. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so this little square block is going to go in. two pieces go together. And how do they go together? They go together like this. Just like that. Okay. And now we're going to take J26, 28 and 27. So I'm guessing you like the Gundam kits, but you never actually watched the show. I do recommend the show. It's they are entertaining, unless of course if you're not into anime at all, um, then. Yeah, then you're not gonna like it because well, they're anime. <laughs> but um, if you do like anime, it is a lot more than just a bunch of guys flying around in robot suits. So there's I don't remember how this one goes exactly. I think it goes forget how this goes. No, not that way. I did have it right. This goes like that. But where this thing lines up in here, I don't know. I think maybe like this. Okay, so 
so we've got a need. We have a need. Now we need J50. Pieces J30 and 31, with these big guys here. say I don't have to worry too much about cleaning up the nub marks on these pieces because these dark gray inner parts almost never get seen okay so this is going to go like this and make sure that the hole is facing downward Basically, the general thing is you want to have the clean nub marks, right, for like this spot here, right, which in the angle, the right angle, so you can see it. So generally, when you cut the nub off super close to it like this, it stresses the plastic and makes it kind of a whitish color. And if that's on the outside, if that's visible, it looks like crap, right? Unless you're going to paint the whole thing, then that looks like garbage, right? It just doesn't look good. But when the parts are the inner parts like this that are going to get covered by armor pieces, then it doesn't matter if it's cleaned up nice and looks pretty or not, right? So that's the whole thing. So generally, these dark gray parts that are in these kits are usually for the inner frame workings, and you, you only see tiny little amounts of it. And so any nub marks that are visible, they get hidden by everything that get, that covers them all up, right? So, yeah, that's true. If, because it can be, when you get a bad cut on there, it can actually put an indent or a divot in the plastic, and then even painting it, it looks like crap, right? For the most part, it's not too bad, right? Getting it like that, especially with these parts, right? Uh, let's see, next, G32 and 33, that's these two here. Pete will leech, you know how bad you are at nubs and sanding, yeah. That's true. read. I really can read. <laughs> Huge one. 
was one thing that was kind of nice about the unicorn kit because the whole thing is white. Um, didn't really have to worry too much about uh, nub marks being super visible. These go on each side like this. Get your holes lined up. bit of bulk to his legs. Now we need C8 and 9, which is a couple of pieces. I believe it's this one and this one. And they are going to go up up here. And uh, figuring out how these line up is going to be fun. pieces. It's these guys. Not them. One side like that, and then this side goes like that. I thought I was, I thought I was king shit on cleanup till I did an airbrush back. <laughs> Everything showed up. Yeah, that's true. It's, uh, It'll really show you, right? There we go. So there's that. And now we've got to put this piece and this piece on. They're a little bit different to the speakers on the back here. See how it lines up? Just like that. And then this one goes like this. Another thing that's cool is, is you engage that secondary knee part that you separate like that. Typical Bandai engineering. So cool. Okay, so we need E1 or 2, depending on which one you're using. So I need this piece, it looks like. Uh, no, maybe not, because that's E. I'm looking at that. I need E1 and 2. Where are we with my E tree? There we go. This is the super dark blue. So I want to make sure my nub marks are nice and clean off of this one. Okay, so now this goes on the front of the knee. Lines up and just goes like that. Does it. There we go. Kind of snaps in. Just like that. Okay, and then this goes on the front. And it's going to go like this. Slides on just like that. Okay? Just like that. Now we're going to take J41 back to our J tree. A few of these are 
be calling from the other lake where some parts are a little bit easier to see than others. So that's why suddenly I change up how I'm taking them off the tree and do a little bit more work cleaning them up in an attempt to not stress the plastic. And then using my razor file to clean them up. Like I said before, sometimes you spend all this time cleaning them up, and then you go and you put the part on. And by the time you finish assembling it, you don't even get to see all that hard work you did assembling it. They're making it nice and clean because it gets hidden by the armor that goes over top of it. And it's like, oh, I don't know, all that work for nothing. Okay, so now we got to put these on and along with this. This one goes first and it clicks in right here, like that. No satisfying snap, but that's okay. And now these back leg pieces, pieces, pieces go on. And we get lined up like that. It's got some calves, nice thick calves. Um, we go to RE 100 for FM kits. Similar scale, less work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when I was looking into, like, when I, before I had built, built my first Gundam at all, I was looking into the different grades real grade, master grade, high grade, all those, all those different ones. And it's like, okay, so which ones do I want to build, right? I want to build ones that have lots of detail and, and look really cool, um, but I don't want them to be super tiny, right? Um, and so that's why I kind of settled on the master grades. And so that's all I build is the master grade ones, even though I know that there's so much different kits for real grade and high grade, right? There's so many different, more, there's just more of them. Um, I still, I like the detail of the master grades and I think the size is pretty good. Um, they're not too big. They're not really tiny, it's, you know, big adult hands. It's not too much intricate work to try and get it together. So I, I'm happy with the, um, with the master grades. Um, I can't, don't really have any complaints about them. Uh, and what's next here? J44 and 45, these two little guys here. In my opinion, the parts are all the same size. <laughs> we really, oh, really? Well, having never built a real grade or a high grade, I can't, I can't tell either way which uh, whether you're correct or not. <laughs> so I'll have to take your word on that. somebody describe the real grades as an attempt to make the Gundams appear what they would be like if they were real? Something like that? Okay, so these guys go into this little slot here. That Enough is going to be exposed, so I got to clean that up. Perfect. Um, high grade does have a knee in two pieces. Real grade will do it in three. Master grade will do it in four. It's 
bigger, but when you lay all the parts next to each other, they're all the same relative size. Okay. So basically, they're just the builds are less complicated. If I'm reading you correctly on that. are in. Now, F19, which I already took off, that's this guy here, goes like this, on the front, this guy goes at the top, and this is his left leg, so it's going to go like this way. So, and then we'll put his foot on, So, like that, and then we flip the page, ah! flip the page, cut part, clean part, assemble part, repeat till finished, <laughs> yeah, pretty much, uh, less intricate really builds, but there's the same complexity, okay, there's zero skill curve in Gunpla, ah, alright, so there's the middle of the book where all the pretty pages are, all the full color stuff. I still don't remember his name. I should look up his name. It's just the pilot of this thing. Cannot remember his name. I know he's Athram Zala. Pilots the um, the other one. <laughs> um, oh, cat crap! I can't remember it. Anyway, all right. Lower body. Let's put it together here. You will build an SD in the exact same way as you do a PG. Really, even an SD, this the, what's that? Uh, super deformed. Those little tiny ones. Wow. Okay. Let's get this leg in there. Come on, stop doing that. I'm gonna pull them apart here. to simplify things and easier so parts don't fly off on me. There we go. Alright, he's got legs. His feet are really stiff. Let's try and pose him a little. Here we go. Okay, get your flaps back on. Yamato. <laughs> what about it? You must be looking at my uh, YouTube or my Instagram page. Oh, Yamato, that's the pilot. Yes, yes. <laughs> Sorry. I thought you were talking about my when I built the space battleship Yamato. <laughs> there we go. Okay. He is done. He is assembled. Okay, as for the basic guy, he's done. Cone Jesus. <laughs> There we go. He is done. So, uh, for this camera, here he is. All right. There we go. So, he's far from complete. I still have to do his, what do they call it next? Rail gun and wing unit. I 
will say I hate the cockpit, that all it does is just pulls out like that. And it doesn't really open up, you can just barely see him in there. He dies like three times with all his back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, he does. Um, you know, that's why they... It's almost like, you know, I got the impression that... Um, Gundam Seed, like I didn't, I never haven't seen the original Gundam Seed. I only had seen Gundam Seed Destiny. Um, but yeah, he, it's almost like they made that show so that they could do more, more kits because they, you know, they start off with the freedom and then they get the straight freedom. They start off with, um, I can't remember the one that, um, Atherin Zella. Uh, piloted at the beginning of the show and then they had the three that got stolen like the, the death side and the underwater one and I don't remember all the names I only watched it like once um, but yeah it was like there's so many different Gundams you know mobile suits and Gundams in that show that got um, a lot of screen time um, and there's so many kits that came out as a result of that show, right? It's like they just wanted to really, really uh, pump out a bunch of them from it. Um, yeah. But as far as the story goes, I wasn't a huge fan. And I would have preferred somebody who's more like Char Asnable in the show. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted Char back. I feel like he didn't really get a proper, a really proper um, send off, you know. But salad so justice, that's it. The justice. So he started off in, a ju in the justice, and then it got destroyed, right? And then um, he came back in another one. I can't remember now. Towards the end of the series, he was in another one. But yeah, the Zakus too. They had the, well, they had Luna Marias in that one. And um, they had the blue one. What was it called? The Shadow or Phantom, something like that. I just actually picked up that kit. Um, and which is just a, another color variant of Luna Marias, right? Which is, it's got two shields on it and it's got the big rail guns on top. Um, but yeah, it's. They just came out with so many different ones in that series. It's uh, pretty crazy, but yeah. Anyway, um, I have to call it here. I have to end it for now. It took me a little bit longer to get this leg assembled than I thought it would, but um, I have to take off, and which means I gotta leave it at this. Uh, Zala Justice or the Zaku Warriors Red? Uh, red. What red? No, you mean the Zakus? Uh, well, Luna Marias was red. Of course, that was kind of like an homage to uh, Char's typical uh, Zakus or, or Sazabi or the Sinaju or whatever it was called. Sinaju? Yeah, I think Sinaju. Um, but yeah, Luna Marius was red, but there's also a blue variant that looks like Luna Marius. Um, I don't know the guy's name. I have the kit, just a sec here. This one here. Oops. <laughs> this guy here. Um, this is the, the Slash Zaku Phantom. Phantom. The Yizak Jewel custom. It's basically just a recolor. Yeah, the slash. Um, this little horns came off. You definitely have... Uh, better memory than I do when it comes to <laughs> this stuff. Let's get him back into a decent pose here so he can stand up normal. 
I am liking it. It's got a good app crunch going on that he can do. You can actually like bend over and look down at somebody. <laughs> it's pretty good. Right. Posability on him is pretty pretty good. He'll look good on the shelf when he's finished, but he's nowhere near done, and I have to get going pretty quick here. But that's him so far. It's not bad. It's definitely showing a, a different style compared to older, older kits. Um, a lot more sleek look which leads to, hey, this one's more agile than other ones. Like, you look at the Zakus, they're like big, tough, bulky, burly type of designs. But their maneuverability and agility is not, it's not there. But this guy looks like he could fly circles around them uh, just because of that. Um, MGEX. Did you do pre-order? No. Um, the MGEX, I don't think I've even seen that one. I'll have to look and see what that one's like. Yeah, I'll have to look into that one. MGEX. Oh, the Strike Freedom, okay. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm going to do another... I was thinking about doing the Strike Freedom, but I'm not 100% sold on it yet. Um, it's, I don't really want to have too many um, that are like the same thing on, on the shelf. Like for me, the, the Freedom and the Strike Freedom was not too much of a difference. Um, just looking at them, I haven't seen looked at them like side by side as the kit. Um, but in the show, it was like, okay, yippee, he's got like a little bit of a difference thing to them, but it's pretty much the same. It's not the same at all. Okay. Hmm. All right. I'll definitely look into that then. The MGEX Strike Freedom. Okay. I'll look into that. I'm actually going to write that down so I can remember that. Where's my pen? going to look into that later. But for now, I've got to get going. So I'm going to have to call it here. Um, so Bob the Builder, thanks. <laughs> Next level insane, eh? Okay. I'll, uh, I'll definitely have to check that out. But um, like I said, i got to get going here. And so i got to call this for the day. And uh, yeah, you too, Bob. Thanks a lot. And thanks for the chat. It's been cool. And um, yeah, so I'm going to end it here. And uh, yeah, so if uh, for those of you who are watching, if you haven't seen it yet, you can check me out on YouTube and uh, check me out there. I've got all kinds of videos of other builds I've done, not just Gundams, but planes and tanks and things like that. Um, if you want to see still shots of the builds that I've done, you can go over to my Instagram. And check those out there. Every time I finish a build, I take five, six, ten pictures of it and I upload it on my Instagram. Um, and I'll put links in the comment box below for YouTubers so you can just click on the links and check it out if you feel like. And other than that, um, gotta get going here, so I'm gonna call it a day. And so thanks for watching, thanks for coming out, and uh, yeah, we'll see you all in the next one. <laughs>